Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the monthly gold chart on NetDania, and the MACD indicator is at the bottom. Now, the reason I drew the trend line in the way I did, uh, you could also draw a secondary trend line meeting up with this one, but I just drew it from the 2005 uh, rally point which wasn't really the beginning of the bull market. The beginning was in 2003. Same thing with silver. But this trend line is important because this is the one that was broken with the bear market. Some have said bear market. Depends on what currency you're in, of course. But uh, it's very critical that this trend line, It again, there's many ways you can draw it. But the way I've drawn it here, you can see that it it seems to match up with a couple of touch points and then it matches up also with the latest uh, rally top here and then failure now it's not if you if you go to the daily here or weekly you can see that it's not failing severely but it is failing at that trend line and that's a trend line it broke through so we really need to get through that $1300 price on gold and of course we expect silver to follow but you can also see here that the MACD kind of has a, a top as well. So will it do it in the near term or will it go lower? Don't really know. Um, just have to watch it. Silver, on the other hand, is a lot weaker. You can see on the weekly, it's, it's trying to make a break above the zero line. But on the monthly, it's kind of like gold. It has a positive cross down below on the MACD, but it's way, way, way below the zero line. So a long ways to go for the bull market to resume. Now some people have talked about Bitcoin. People have mentioned that uh, it's possible that the bull market is over. I don't think so, especially with what's going on in the world right now. But if you look at Bitcoin closely, this is the daily from Bitfinex. And uh, you can look at the daily or you can look at the three day if we go to the three day, you can see there's a series of pennants. Now you can't really see the pennant from the past because it's it's off the chart, but we know that Bitcoin came from a penny. So actually, if we draw the bottom of this pen, uh, pennant at a penny and the top at twelve hundred dollars, well, what's what's a halfway point between a penny and twelve hundred dollars is about six hundred bucks. So six hundred or so is going to be uh, getting to the middle of the pennant. So it, it may be a very, very large pennant. Now back to the smaller pennant that we're seeing here. This is very clearly a pennant formation. Nobody can deny that. Uh, it, yes, it could break down. Absolutely, it could break down. But I, I don't think uh, things are over for Bitcoin. And I certainly don't think that things are over for alternative currencies. Now someone posted an article about Florin coin, and uh, I initially got into Florin coin because of the a potential for uh, actually for torrenting and uh, creating a database because of the Alexandria Library project. Now I don't have I don't own half of Florin Coin. I wish I did, uh, but I own a significant percent. I think I have the second largest wallet of Florin Coins out there. But uh, here's the article here: Libertarian Party of Texas will today log the results of a wide range of ballot initiatives on three separate blockchains the most recent in a line of projects integrating the technology into the voting process results of everything from ballot initiatives proposed on the spot to selection of states u.s presidential electors will be logged on the blockchains and what a party leader says is a step toward politicians being held accountable to voters in a new way john wilford treasurer of the libertarian party of texas told coindesk quote the idea is that after the balloting is collected, the records will be uploaded to the blockchain for future generations and accountability. At the two-day event, which kicks off today in San Antonio, Texas, votes by 250 delegates and 100 alternatives on all the state nominations will be logged in the Bitcoin blockchain, a private blockchain created by Libertarian Partner Blockchain Technologies Corporation, as well as the Florin Coin blockchain. Quote, every ballot is going to be logged in Florin coin, said Nick Spanos, founder of BTC. We also hash all that out and put it in the Bitcoin blockchain. But on the Florin coin, you can read every single ballot. 
Spano said he was attracted to Florin Coin for the project because of its metadata limit of 528 bytes compared to Bitcoin's 80 bytes. The extra space makes it perfect for storing ballot information, he said. So, fantastic story. I'm really excited about that. Now, has it impacted the market? Well, let's look at the chart here on Poloniex. Um, yeah, there's some volume coming in here. That is volume of about 8 Bitcoin. And you can see that Florin Coin has a series of these tops here on spike volume. So I'm I'm pretty bullish. Uh, hopefully, it's going to pay off. Now I have a, a lot of positions in a lot of alternative cryptocurrencies, and uh, it's kind of like the story we're going to cover here on uh, silver, and uh, why I, I see value in the alternatives because. Uh, when the primary one is taken down, the alternatives may not be a target. So I want to read the Bill Holter article, and then I'm going to play a video here that uh, gets into the topic as well about this. Again, people are talking about this Panama Papers thing. And uh, if you remember, Bill Holter had his uh, truth bomb thing, and he was... Uh, pitching a story that there was going to be a truth bomb coming out of the East. Now, he may be right, and, uh, you know, it. it's hard to determine who these factions are. Now, I, I can guarantee you one thing, that all of these factions in all of these governments are corrupt individuals, and they're criminals uh, pretty much to a man. If If someone's a politician in national office, he's a criminal. Uh, it, it's going to be very hard to find one who isn't uh, a, a person who is uh, taking bribes and a criminal. But uh, let's read this article. This is kind of a, a different take on the Panama Papers, and I'm going to play a video about that and talk about some silver picks related to that. I coined the phrase truth bomb well over a year ago to much skepticism it would or even could ever happen as you may know, information was dropped in truth bomb fashion regarding the clientele of a Panamanian law firm, Masek Fonseca, and that gives the Yahoo article. This information dump was collated by 100 international journalists. When I first heard the news, I thought, here it is, the truth bomb. After about 30 minutes or so and reading who was being exposed, I began to scratch my head. Noticeably absent from being named were any prominent Americans or Europeans, with the exception of David Cameron's father and several members of British Parliament. Then it dawned on me this was sort of a reverse truth bomb where Putin, Z, and others were being discredited. As you know, it has been my contention we would see a massive truth bomb dropped by Putin and the East ON East on the various Western dirties, you name it, bribes, hidden accounts of business leaders, senators, representatives, governors, ambassadors, past presidents. I believed we would see information regarding false flags, including 911, election fraud, and even empty vaults being exposed. Instead, the truth bomb, though very probably true, was only detrimental to non-Western interests. Did I have it backwards? I believe what we have just seen was only an opening volley by the West to try to discredit what they know is coming from the East. In fact, it could turn out to be a free-for-all amongst the elites where the sharks eat the sharks by outing each other. I've said for years that we live in a world of true lies covered by holograms of the rule of law. We may very well soon see this. The elites now look like they will begin outing each other in an effort to say, what I said wasn't so bad, just look Look at what so-and-so did. In reality, this will be very good for the average Joe in the long run. Notice I said the long run because the immediate aftermath of the truth coming out means we will learn that everything is worth nothing or at least a small fraction of what we're being told. Trust will completely break down and with it markets. Stock and bond markets, cross-trading and derivatives, institutions of all sorts will fail, and most importantly, the global fiat currency markets themselves. The aftermath may even approach Mad Max proportions, but truth will be good in the long run, especially if the elites outing each other leads to lynchings and unrest not seen since the French Revolution. Truth now, though painful, will lead to washing away of the current systems, in the words of Chinese President Xi, painful in the short term, but very good 
for the long term. Interesting that he's quoting President Z. I do need to make mention of the timing of what is happening. Global trade and GDP is collapsing. Markets have been held up by derivatives while remaining unencumbered collateral is almost non-existent. Lowering interest rates and flooding the system with new speed balls is no longer working. Put simply, we are hitting a wall in the global Ponzi scheme. In about two weeks, the Chinese will open for full trading in a cash-only metals exchange. Western inventories of less than $1 billion of gold and silver will not be able to withstand any arbitrage action which will be sure to follow. Please note, China will say, we didn't do it, the free market did. Let's ponder a question or two to wrap this up. What would have been market reactions today were the truth bombs dropped on the West instead of the East? What if we were given hard evidence that dozens of congressmen took bribes disguised as campaign contributions in the billions of dollars and their votes were bought? What if we got information of blackmail on Supreme Court justices or gold balances held individually by past and present central bankers? What if proof of regularly rigged elections were to surface? What if absolute proof that pointed to Israeli, Saudi, U.S. involvement in the planning and implementation of 911 were to come out? What would be the reaction if scores of dirty dealing, fraud, tax evasion, and even eliminations were performed by past presidents? Not to leave Europe out of this party, what if similar information was dropped on them some sunny Sunday afternoon? I ask these questions because when the return volley of truth bombs comes, it will not be pleasant. Much of what we have come to believe as our way of life in the West will not only come into question, it will be gone in an instant. Poo-poo this at your own risk because it is coming as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow morning. We've lived in a dream world for well over a decade. The truth will be outed and the truth happens to be some very ugly stuff. Our markets, our economy, our way of life will be permanently altered faster than you can ask what just happened. We will go to bed on a Friday night in one world and wake up one Monday morning in another entirely different world. If you want to short something, short country clubs. This is such an important topic. It was decided we should put it out publicly. If you liked, how could anyone like such news? The content of my writings and interviews with Jim Sinclair, we can be found at JS Mindset. So that's the Bill Holter. Now, interesting take on that. Um... It kind of smacks of the Jeff Berwick recent video that I covered. You know, he's kind of hedging his bets. Uh, I learned a long time ago not to make predictions. Uh, but we'll see. Maybe this prediction will come true. Now, I wanted to play a video here that is a slightly different take on this story here. And uh, it's very, very interesting. And then I'm going to wrap it up with a silver pick and then why I think we've been right on our picks so far. So let's uh, play this video about the Panama Papers, a different take. Recently the Panama Papers leak and its initial aftermath have been discussed at length in both the mainstream and alternative media. The 2.6 terabyte leak of sensitive data from the Panamanian law firm Mossack Fonseca so far is the largest leak in history and is causing a lot of waves throughout the globe. While the mainstream media is pushing the idea that the leak is completely unexpected and is exposing a wide range of financial shadiness and tax havens across the world. The alternative media is a little more suspect of the leak, saying that it is controlled and is designed to target certain individuals and strategic regions throughout the world while keeping other key players untouched, as well as removing lower level tax havens that are no longer authorized by the upper tier of the elite. Well. As I have already stated in my other videos on this topic, I tend to agree with the alternative media on this one, that this is a controlled leak that ties into multiple different agendas, some of which I already mentioned above. Since there are already lots of people in the alternative media talking about some of the more blatant agendas this controlled leak ties into, I wanted to discuss an agenda that isn't as apparent, but will be in the somewhat near future. Understand that one of the major agendas of this controlled Panama paper leak is to destroy unauthorized tax havens across the world. When most people think of tax havens they instantly think, offshore, shell companies, money laundering, and things of that nature. 
but really a tax haven is any method of storing wealth that avoids it being taxed what they deem the fair amount. Well with this thought in mind come what I feel may very well be the long con of the Panama Papers, a con I haven't yet seen discussed, which wouldn't become apparent for most until around the time that negative interest rate policy NIRP, are being talked about openly on a mass scale throughout the world. You see with all this end tax haven talk, people are blinded by the obvious aspects of this leak, which target the rich, the corrupt, offshore companies and billionaires, as this is where the discussion is currently pointed. The issue is, like everything, you should ask how it will impact you personally. You're not a billionaire are you? Do you have a series of shell companies? Do you frequent Panamanian law firms? No I didn't think so, so those specific elements likely don't directly impact you right? But if you physically hold precious metals like gold or silver or even physical cash, you may find out in the end that it does impact you all the same. Understand that very soon, something is going to take place to negatively impact the US economy in a major way, likely a multi-day series of false flags so they can act like the victim instead of the cause, which I personally feel may very well be a large-scale cyber attack in New York and a near simultaneous low-yield nuclear attack on DC and Chicago, as the the major elements. Anyways, in the end, whatever takes place, the US and many other countries throughout the world in the fairly near future, in the false flags aftermath are going to be implementing not only negative interest rates, but also a large series of systemic bail-ins, both of which are technically a form of taxation. Negative interest rates will slowly eat away at your savings in the bank, while the bail-in aspect on the other hand would directly take a percentage of your total savings within your account in a lump sum. Anyways as part of this, people are going to be doing everything they can to avoid these harsh taxes, and with this comes hoarding of physical cash, precious metals, and other physical forms of wealth storage that can't easily be taxed. The issue is, with this Panama paper leak and all its preconditioning against tax havens, people aren't realizing yet, that very soon, once negative interest rates and bail-ins are being openly discussed and prepared for implementation, the whole tax haven or tax dodgy discussion in the media will quickly switch from talking about corrupt billionaires and shell companies halfway around the world, and instead will be talking about something much closer to home, literally. Understand, once negative interest rates and bail-ins are implemented, Simply having your wealth outside of the banking system in any form will be seen as a tax haven, and you will become a tax dodger. Due to the conditioning taking place right now via this Panama Papers leak, the majority of the mindless population will not understand the difference between hiding billions offshore, and storing a couple ounces of gold under your mattress as a personal choice of savings, and because of this soon these two completely different actions will be basically seen as one and the same. Tax haven, tax dodger, illegal. In my strong opinion this whole thing is all part of the coming capital control war, which ties directly in with the coming transition to a biometric digital currency, the implementation of negative interest rates, the rollout of large-scale systemic bail-ins, and the demonization and eventual criminalization of physical assets that are outside of direct taxation control, which again would be done using the preconditioned guise of tax havens, with physical precious metals and physical cash being the main targets. Anyways, if you